Hi there. First off, I'd like to apologize that it's taken me so long to get another video up. I've been really busy and haven't had much of a chance to make too much more progress with my ROV. So in this video, I'd like to focus on my tether and power system for my ROV and what I'm using and why I'm using these parts for it. So I've seen a lot of people using 12 volt car batteries for their robot and you know that I guess that'll work but I'm just gonna do a little comparison here so if I'm using 12 volts at say 14 amps that's you know a few motors some lights that's about what I'm gonna use 12 volts at 14 amps that's approximately 200 watts so you could take a battery like this this is just a standard you know motorcycle battery I think maybe it's for alarm systems or something similar but 12 volts, 8 amp hours. So at that amp rate of 14 amps, I'd get half an hour, 40 minutes tops if I ran 14 amps all the time. Of course, I probably wouldn't, so you get a little bit more time than uh, just, you know, if you were flat out running at 14 amps. So that's, you know, that'd be one way to do it. So for the sake of this uh, video, I'm going to go with a 150 feet tether for uh, just all these numbers here. And the first example is just made from 14 gauge wire. So this is hobby wire, it's silicone and uh, very flexible, basically high current. So at uh, 12 volts, 14 amps, 150 foot tether. And if you're drawing that full you know, 200 watts, 14 amps, you're going to end up with 1.4 volts on the other end of that tether, or basically an 88% loss. So because you're drawing nearly 14 amps over 150 feet of this wire, you're basically just turning this, all this wire into a giant resistor, and uh, it's just dropping all the voltage. So that's not good and you're not going to get power on your motors, control, you know, any control circuitry. That's not going to work out. So that's, you know, that's definitely not a good thing, but I've seen people try and do it and I don't, some of it seems to work okay depending on how much current they're using, but if I tried to do this with my system, it would not be good. So to properly do this, you would need two gauge wire, or to, as best, I guess. So at 12 volts at 14 amps, at the other end of that tether, you get 11.3 volts, which is only a 5.5% loss. So that's a little bit better, but two gauge wire is massive wire, expensive, probably not very flexible, and it's not going to be buoyant, very buoyant at all with all that copper in it. So that wouldn't work out very well. So the next option for me was to bump it up to 48 volts. So this is four times the voltage of the uh, regular, you know, car battery or household battery like this. But since I can run at 48 volts and at the same time only require three amps, I can make this wire 14 gauge and as you can see at the other end of that 150 foot tether I've only lost 3 volts, less than 3 volts, which is only a 5% loss. So by bumping up the voltage 4 times I essentially decrease the current by 4 times as well. So here's the power equation. So the higher I boost up the voltage, the lower my current rating is. and the smaller, I guess, higher gauge wire I could go. Smaller in dia diameter, but higher in number. So that's why I chose to do with, go with the 48 volt system. Now that brings its own set of difficulties because almost nothing in the hobby, you know, Hobby King sells, they, they don't sell motors that run at 48 volts. You gotta convert everything down, so the first part of that difficulty is you got to supply 48 volts. So that's a power supply for a server 
48 volts at 600 watts, so I get about 12 amps. Here's, let me see, here's a ruler. It's one foot, so it's a pretty big power supply. Almost foot and foot and a quarter, like 13, 14 inches. So that supplies, out of those big lugs back in, back there, that supplies 48 volts. So that goes on the surface. And I do have to have a, be somewhere near a household type connector, a mains connector. That's AC, single phase AC, going into the back of this. And I have then 600 watts of DC going out here. So then that goes down my tether. I will use 14 gauge, maybe 12 gauge, just depends. And uh, at the other end, when I'm drawing uh, three amps there, I've only lost 5% of my voltage. So now at the other end of this tether, I'm left with 45 volts at three amps. So now I gotta convert that down for all my voters, my motors. So this is a voltage converter, DC to DC converter for a golf cart actually. The input is 48 volts. Output is 12 volts at 10 amps. I probably won't run it that high as you can see 10 amps max. You don't want to run it close to the max, but anyway, this will convert that 48 volts at say for this converter itself, maybe an amp down to 12 volts at 10 amps. So now I can run a couple of motors and maybe a light off of this. So that's why I've chosen to go with a 48 volt tether system. And you can see those numbers right there. For a 150 foot tether, you basically need to go, you can't just use a car battery at this type of current. Because current determines the size of uh, your, your wire. So if I, you know, here's some 10 gauge wire much thicker. This 10 gauge stuff is for higher current. And so you could run, you know, 12 volts at, you could run more amps through this than this. But if I raise the voltage, I don't need as many amps. So even though on this other end, I'm using 14 amps, you know, I'm still, even, even though, well, eventually I'm running at 14 amps, I'm still only drawing three amps out of here because of all those converters in the way. So I'm essentially, I'm converting the volts up at the end, the surface end of my power supply, and then my current goes down. So that allows me to have a small tether. And then at the other end, I'm converting the volts down so the amps go back up. And then that's how I power all my motors. And then there's some, you know, inefficiencies involved in that with this, it's, you know, only 90% efficient, 80% efficient. So I will lose power, but I will be allowed to have a much more flexible tether, smaller tether, lighter tether, less expensive tether as well. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll leave an email address in the comments below as well if you'd like to email me. Thanks, see you later.